Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome dear learners my name is Mikhlesh Kumar Jha and this is our first live session for this course introduction to political theory um, first of all let me thank you all for enrolling in this course and also i'm sure you are uh, learning from the videos and regularly submitting your assignment um, uh, and on the discussion forum i hope your queries um, are uh, answered or responding by the TAs or also by uh, me. So um, uh, let me once again thank you uh, for um, enrolling in this course and also request you all to um, uh, register for the exam if you have not done it before. So uh, uh, exam registration is something different from um, enrollment and the last date for that is I think March 12th. So I'll request you all to uh, do the uh, exam registration as well. In this live session, uh, um, what I'm going to do is to uh, respond to some of the queries that you have uh, posted on the Google spreadsheet and also some of the queries which is uh, significant um, on the discussion forum. So um, I'm going to begin by uh, responding to the queries uh, put up on the Google spreadsheet and then on the discussion forum. But I'll also request you to write your queries, comments, or any dots that you may have about the topics, readings, exams in this chat box, and I'll be happy to respond to them as well. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for taking interest in this course and uh, putting up very interesting questions, comments uh, 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 about uh, the topics, readings, pedagogy and so on. I'll begin by um, first discussing some... Hi, Akhila. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, some of the uh, queries which is of general in nature and then I'll come to the specific question that you have raised. So um, first um, is about Akhila. Uh, uh, thanks for being here Akhila during this live session as well. So her question is about how should we prepare for exam should we uh, refer to transcripts or any specific books that we should refer to and about the revision of the topics. So um, uh, there was some delay in uploading the PPTs and I hope um, the videos and transcripts are available. So as far as exam is concerned, uh, the PPT transcripts beside the video would be sufficient. So the question is going to be um, objective and you will have multiple choice. So uh, for exam purpose, I'll um, advise you to uh, refer to uh, transcripts, PPTs, besides um, uh, regular videos. But if you are interested to more about um, a particular uh, topic or particular dimension of a topic, then on each video, <coughs> In each video, if you look at, I have uh, uh, kept a slide for uh, reference. And from there, I'll advise you to uh, uh, look for the specific books if you are interested to know further about any uh, topic or particular dimension about a topic. But in general, if you are interested, I'll suggest uh, Rajiv Bhargav and Asok Acharya, uh, Political Theory and Introduction and also Oxford um, uh, textbook uh, for, uh, you know, as a kind of uh, reference, if you like, uh, to prepare for this, uh, this course. All right, so because Pradeep and Halima has said about um, a private uh, separate interactive session, uh, 
and this is especially for those who are uh, research scholars and also from the industries so i'm not sure about um, your uh, objectives or you know your expectation from that interactive session so uh, you can write to me personally on jhamk j h a m k 21 at iitg.ec.in uh, with your queries or expectation and if it is feasible we may have separate interactive uh, session as well now uh, i'd like to respond to uh, a set of questions by uh, vikas yadav i hope vikas is here in this live session if not he can always uh, um, uh, come back to uh, this uh, recorded live session and he has a very good set uh, uh, very um, uh, interesting uh, questions one is about uh, what is the greatest good of the greatest number and the second is related to that but that is something different so uh, first question is by um, john uh, uh, referred to hedonist philosophy or what is called um, uh, the philosophy which is about uh, uh, realizing or fulfilling the human satisfaction in a practical material sense rather than imaginary or you know intellectual uh, uh, way so <clears throat> this idea is uh, based on the premise that one of the ways through which you can assess the significance of a theory or uh, significance of a policy is to see where it can uh, enhance the happiness of the greatest number so um, to us, so uh, one of the uh, purpose of uh, uh, james mill philosophy is to reach out to the people and um, enhance their satisfaction in their material life and not just in the imaginary or the intellectual uh, ways as some of the philosophers uh, could argue so um, this statement particularly becomes a kind of um, criteria to assess the public policy or any welfare programs so that policy is the best or that program or welfare program is the best which is going to satisfy the greatest needs of the greatest number so that's the sole criteria and that is the uh, whole uh, idea uh, because your second question is really uh, very interesting and i um, Uh, uh, really appreciate you for asking this question that is about elaborating the rhetorical non uh, nonsense upon states so you know in uh, 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 britain there were uh, different groups different schools of thought so uh, one prominent school of thought uh, was natural right theorist so locke hobbes um, rousseau um in um, uh, france they were all arguing about something they uh, call natural rights and if you refer to some of the videos uh, on um, uh, you know uh, uh, these uh, rights particularly when we discuss rights and refer to these uh, thinkers they belong to a school of thought we call social contract tradition and their argument is that we have uh, established the state to maintain order to um, uh, maintain order so that it is possible to live peacefully and then uh, pursue our personal uh, uh, notion of good or personal objectives or the way we want to um, mold our personality so they look at a state as a kind of artificial legal entity with a particular set of objectives however once uh, this idea of state becomes popular their argument is that this state cannot take away certain rights which they regard as natural rights and therefore the very existence very legitimacy of the state according to social contract theorist is to acknowledge recognize and protect those rights of the individual so that's the natural right theorist in contrast to that john um, uh, james mill argued that these uh, argument based on natural rights are simply nonsensical rhetorical argument which threaten the real stability in the society 
real peace in the society. So these are basically imaginary and he goes on to say uh, uh, them to be mischievous, fallacious or even anarchical. So uh, James Mill argument about uh, this um, rhetorical uh, uh, nonsense upon splits is about um, questioning the premise or foundation of natural right theorist who is arguing uh, about certain fundamental natural rights of the individual which a state must recognize. The very legitimacy of the state according to natural right theorist is in its ability to protect those rights. So uh, uh, for uh, thinkers like James Mill or other uh, uh, hedonist philosophers and that these are you know uh, uh, something which uh, threaten the existing order peace in the society and leads to uh, various uh, anarchical um, uh, or radical uh, uh, development which may uh, threaten the peace and so on. So that's my uh, response to you uh, because um, and if you have any uh, further question you are welcome to uh, write during this live session in the chat box and also on the discussion forum. And uh, let me re uh, repeat this point that uh, now uh, uh, that's all the question which I have on uh, the Google spreadsheet that, uh, that was shared with you. Uh, now I'm going to discuss some of the questions which is uh, raised on the discussion forum. And meanwhile, I'll request those of you who are in this uh, meeting to write your queries and comments on the chat box section and I'll be, uh, respond to them as well. Okay, so one of the question was about uh, how to register for exam. So as I have said that uh, uh, this online platform invite you to enroll and this is open for everyone interested in that particular subject. So um, enrollment is a step towards um, uh, uh, getting a certificate or registering for the exam. So you have to enroll first and then after paying a I think nominal uh, fees of a uh, thousand rupees you can uh, register for the exam and unless you register for the exam you cannot get the certificate or you cannot write the exam. So for this course the last date for registration is March 12 and I'll request you all to uh, do the registration as soon as you can to write the exam or get the certificate for it. <clears throat> Alright, then a set of questions was about uh, notes, PPTs and transcriptions. So uh, as I have responded um, uh, earlier that you can uh, refer, uh, you can um, regularly visit the course portal where you can um, download uh, the PPTs and I'm sure within a day or two uh, we are going to upload uh, uh, the PPTs. Transcripts are already uploaded and uh, videos are there. So you can um, refer to um, them to um, uh, prepare for the exam. Now um, some question was also about you know um, classes of exam dates. So um, uh, some of you have registered for the two posts and there is the exam on the same date for both the course. For exam, uh, example, uh, I have offered two courses, Introduction to Political Theory and Introduction to Modern Indian Political Thought. And many of you have registered for both these courses. Now, um, uh, to uh, clarify your confusion about these classes, I'd like to say that there would be two sessions uh, simultaneously for both these courses. So on 24th April, we'll have one morning session and one afternoon session for both these courses. And when they will uh, release the admit card, they will ensure that, you know, there is no class in terms of, you know, you are getting the admission ticket for the both courses on the same day in the same shift. So if you are writing, for example, political theory exam in the morning shift, you'll get the admit card for the evening or vice versa. So there will not be any classes even if you have enrolled for two courses and the date of exam is the same because there would be two 
session for each courses and uh, you can opt for morning or uh, afternoon session respectively all right so um, now um, there is some specific question uh, let me address them first is about uh, this uh, communitarianism or multiculturalism which talks about you know um, uh, this idea that individuals are given rights based on their background so does giving reservation or quota to people considered a part of providing rights so uh, this again is a very good uh, question asked on the discussion forum and i think it will uh, uh, be there in many of learners mind as well so as you know the uh, idea of communitarian rights or multicultural rights are based on this understanding or conceptualization of individual as embedded in some society some culture some tradition and that society that culture that tradition shapes the world views shapes the identity of that person so to have a stable society to have an inclusive society you need to recognize the individual also because he or she is embedded in certain community certain culture certain tradition in contrast to that if you like, like liberal conception of individualism which is based on this idea that individual is a rational person or a self defining subject that means individual shapes his or her identity by doing something by uh, uh, you know setting certain goals and pursuing uh, those goals so basically the idea in the liberal philosophy is that the individual is atomistic subject self defining rational uh, subject and the state society should provide him or her condition to shape his or her personality the way he or she likes now in contrast to that the communitarian and multicultural um, theorists or philosophers have argued that individuals are not just self defining autonomous subject cut off from the society so they also argue that in the society there is a, a difference between the majoritarian or the minor min, minority culture or dominant or subordinated or marginalized culture so how you are going to address those hierarchy those uh, discrimination that exist in the society there you need to recognize uh, the embeddedness of the individual and for that they argue that individual rights or identity should be recognized also because he or she belongs to a particular community so yes um, uh, uh, the um, for example um, we have talked about will kim liko three kinds of rights so there is no one singular um, you know uniform set of rights as we see find in liberal philosophy that all the individual across the world across the um, uh, context should be given the same set of rights right here in the multicultural communitarian philosophy you have a context sensitive understanding of rights so the uh, the rights or the expectations of the individual vary from his or her social or economic religious political status and once you recognize those rights you should be sensitive to those specific needs and therefore um, you know um for example in many country you have self representation right minority ethnic uh, rights or special rights in terms of same um you know uh, considering um uh, uh, the economic or the socio historical background of certain community you provide them certain um, uh, reservation or quota or what is also known as affirmative action the idea of in affirmative action is not to discriminate but to empower certain communities which is historically marginalized or economically marginalized in the contemporary context so the purpose is to create an egalitarian society or a just society in order to achieve that you have uh, the mechanism of quota or reservation or other uh, such mechanisms which we have discussed and um, uh, those um, uh, quota reservation and mechanism is not then a kind of gift or a kind of discretionary uh, uh, patronizing 
uh, policies but it's the rights of those uh, individuals or groups or communities which are historically marginalized so they have a claim they have a right and that is different from say the welfare programs which uh, government or the state may run on its discretion so uh, i'll agree with uh, your uh, point that um, um, reservation or quota are not a kind of gift but it is a right of those who are left behind those who are socio economically historically marginalized and at this point i mean this is a very good question but uh, 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 it will be good to know your name as well so whenever you pose a question on the discussion forum or uh, you know on the google sheet you mention your name but on the discussion forum it will be good to have your name as well so i think that's my response to uh, your question uh, the um, next question is um, the interrelationship about uh, or the connection between others regarding function and general will so uh, if you have uh, followed uh, various videos that i have shared with you uh, this self regarding function is part of uh, say uh, the freedom and so is general will but these are not uh, uh, connected let me explain it this way so um, john is toward mill while uh, defending uh, freedom or its uh, necessity for the growth of individual personality defines uh, 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 freedom almost in a negative uh, ways of course he acknowledges certain restrictions so uh, that restrictions is you know to prevent the individual from harming others otherwise he want the individual to be given uh, complete freedom even to silence the whole humanity rather than silent uh, silenced by the whole humanity so he was the absolute supporter of Uh, freedom but he wanted uh, you know uh, that freedom to be uh, limited or constrained only on the principle of when it harms the other uh, other uh, individuals so a society or a state according to mill can only prevent the individual from doing certain things only when that act of doing uh, violate the rights of others and there he makes a distinction between self regarding function and others regarding function and the idea is that uh, you know any actions uh, the consequences of which is solely bared by those who involved in that act so suppose a individual is doing certain things and the consequences of those uh, doings or those things are bared by the individual himself or herself there is no business other individual society or state should interfere in that person's life but suppose a person does certain things which has consequences on others there the society or other person or the state can reasonably restrict the freedom of uh, individual so that's the uh, division he makes between self regarding functions and other regarding functions however in the real uh, life or practical life this is very uh, uh, difficult uh, to sustain for example you know uh, one has a uh, right over his own body but should he or she be allowed to commit suicide or take drugs or you know uh, one has the right to listen to any music but can one do so if uh, listening to that music may hamper other person's desire or right to read a novel or sleep peacefully or prepare for certain exams and so on so if you look at uh, the uh, distinction between pub, um, self regarding and other regarding functions it's very hard to sustain in real practical life so that's the uh, way you should understand others regarding function general will uh, is uh, by rousseau and this is again a very uh, unique uh, definition of uh, freedom where Rousseau argued uh, that you know individual should be forced to be free, and uh, I mean this is a very you know uh, uh, unique ways of defining the freedom. 
so if somebody is forced to do something against his will can we call it freedom but according to rousseau it can be the freedom because that individual himself herself doesn't know uh, what is in his you know or society's best interest and what is in the best interest of the society is to be determined by general will and as we have discussed general will can be the will of one person few person or the whole person right so um, the idea is that individual freedom is enhanced when individual follow the general will so i mean how you can connect the two uh, seems uh, you know problematic to me uh, both uh, and these concepts has very uh, you know separate or distinct uh, context in which um, uh, they make sense so i do not see um, uh, the connection between the self regarding function or um, general will of uh, rousseau however if you want to clarify anything you can if you are in the live uh, session you can write in the chat box else i will uh, request you to uh, pose further question on the discussion forum and i'll be happy to respond i think uh, a very uh, good question is by anand and uh, i hope i pronounce his name correctly because i am uh, 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 reading it from the emit which uh, uh, you use while uh, posing your question so this question is about kantian definition of freedom autonomy and morality and that's a very good question and i uh, um, uh, hope that uh, you, many of you may have similar question while uh, discussing or thinking about kantian um, uh, kantian um, uh, definition of freedom and uh, one of the uh, uh, criteria for freedom according to kant is to be governed by self legislated law that means individual is enlightened when he or she is free from any kind of self imposed immaturity condition what is self imposed immaturity condition many of us do not dare to think for ourselves many of us would like to follow the norms or the uh, uh, guidelines or the instructions set by others and uh, you know in that process we do not really think for ourselves or develop the norms uh, or set the norms for guiding our own actions and behaviors so uh, for kant a quint essential enlightenment thinker the individual can realize his or her true freedom when he or she is capable of self legislating or setting certain norms and values for himself or herself without being dependent on others so the freedom is absolutely necessary but this freedom kant connects with the idea of morality and autonomy and these two things you can understand by understanding kantian um, a priori maxim which is called categorical imperative what is categorical imperative is basically a, um, a principle through which you can make decisions in any practical context that means you know it doesn't tells you what to do exactly in a particular context but it gives you a framework using which you can arrive at the best uh, uh, decision which has to be universal and unconditional so the uh, a priori maxim or the categorical imperative is to be governed by those principles which you want everyone to follow universally or unconditionally so that means you know um, you in a, any practical situation you are going to follow that particular course of action which you want others to follow universally or without any conditions for example uh, let me give you uh, uh, for illustration for pur illustration purposes let me um, give you the example of you know cheating in the exam so right uh, all of you might be worried about say grades and uh, to get good grades you all might be uh, working hard um, uh, uh, submitting your assignments uh, watching the videos 
reading the PPTs and the transcripts and also some books and other uh, videos which may help you to prepare that topic and prepare well for the exam. That's the one way of doing it. The other way, you know, some of you may think that you should, um, you should, you know, have access to question or do some kind of cheating or access to, you know, some other uh, uh, help uh, during the exam. But that two set of uh, actions are different. So first, all of you want to have good grades, good marks, and for that, the best course of action, which is universal or unconditional, is that everyone should work hard and, you know, through working hard, they should get uh, good grades. The other, the slightly different ways of achieving the grade may be um, helpful, but you don't want everyone to follow. So everyone, so open help books kind of thing, then it does not give you any specific uh, advantage over the others in a healthy free competition. So, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 the um, a priori maxim or the idea of freedom is connected, therefore, with this idea of autonomy that nobody tells you what to do. But when you set certain uh, guidelines, certain uh, norms, certain values, you are governed by a principle, by a maxim, which is universal and also moral, that you want everyone to follow the same course of action universally and without any condition. This you can also, this is a priori maxim, that means uh, we talked about kingdom of ends, peace and so on, where you know, um, you treat everyone as an end in themselves. That's the ethical and moral position. And once you have that, there would be freedom and autonomy and everyone would be free to pursue his or her interest or develop himself or their capabilities to the fullest. So the whole purpose of life or enlightenment is to attain the higher and higher stage of enlightenment, the is of reason. And for that, you require individual having the courage to think for himself independently, but while thinking for himself or herself, driven by a universal or moral notion of what should be done. So that he um, uh, provides through this uh, categorical imperative or a priori maxim. And this, for understanding purpose, you can uh, contrast with, say, what is called hypothetical uh, uh, imperative. Hypothetical imperative is, you know, you know what you want to do and you also want uh, know what, uh, you know, um, uh, you, uh, you also want to know what you want to do, but you also uh, have a certain predefined objective for doing certain things. So in the hypothetical imperative, the person involved in action is driven not by action itself, but by the consequences or the result of that action. So that's the hypothetical imperative. Categorical imperative in contrast is that doing things in itself is reward. You don't need ulterior purpose. So for example, to get good marks, you should work hard. And working hard in itself should be the realization or actualization rather than, you know, uh, 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 getting the good marks or so is the notion of truth, beauty and so on. So categorical imperative or the idea of freedom connected with autonomy and morality is this, you know, um, uh, interconnecting uh, uh, values or value system where individual can think for himself, decide for himself, so selfless listen. But that self-legislation is a part of larger uh, development in the society in terms of bringing about enlightenment and, uh, uh, enlightenment and so on. So uh, categorical imperative uh, is that maxim through which individual can truly realize his freedom when this freedom is not like, you know, we have discussed say, in the um, SI Berlin essays or by some other, you know, um, scholars argument about, you know, freedom is to uh, have a kind of a license or a kind of, uh, you know, um, um, uh, a gift from the society recognized by society. Freedom is something through which you can actualize yourself. 
you can lead to the greater and greater stage of uh, enlightenment or bring about enlightenment in the society as well. And to do that, you need to connect it with the larger question of autonomy and morality. So I hope that would be my uh, answer to this uh, question on individual freedom, morality and autonomy. Do not see them as distinct or separate from each other rather than deeply interconnected. So, you know, uh, in the um, Kantian um, uh, philosophy, even if it is impossible to achieve um, um, uh, objective or, you know, uh, the values to its fullest level, yet the aspiration towards it would lead us to the greater and greater heights, uh, you know, uh, better and better stages of enlightenment or ease of region. And this works both at the individual level or also at the society level. And there he argues about this idea of categorical, uh, categorical imperative or a priori maxim. And through that he connects this idea of individual freedom, morality and uh, autonomy. I hope I have answered your question, um, uh, Anand. And uh, now uh, there is uh, one question on the chat box by uh, Priyanka. So, uh, this is about um, uh, essay uh, in the exam, I think Priyanka, you are referring to um, uh, the nature of question in the exam. Will there be any, uh, you know, uh, essay type or subjective question? So, uh, for the exam purpose, I think uh, uh, there will be only multiple choice questions. And um, the nature of question would be, you know, uh, based on the assignment or your ability to recall after watching all the videos. So uh, uh, there would be two segments on uh, recall or based on your memories. Second segment would be on uh, uh, the basis of assignment, which you have submitted uh, regularly. And finally, there would be, you know, open question, which would basically assess your understanding, comprehension or analytical abilities about various topics that we have discussed. So uh, that would be uh, the um, uh, answer to your question. So in the exam, there would not be any uh, essay type or subjective questions. All right, is there any question? Okay, so um, let me stop here. Uh, with a request to all of you to use the discussion forum and also uh, do the registration if you have not done before since the uh, closing um, date is approaching. So uh, 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 we are going to have one more live session uh, before the final exam and uh, I hope you will join me um, uh, during that uh, session as well and use the discussion forum where uh, we'll be happy to respond to any of the queries that you may have about the course or whatever I have responded to during this live session. We'll be very happy to respond to them as well. So thank you to all of you who are with us during this live session and for all the uh, interesting questions that you have put up on the discussion forum or on the Google Sports. So thank you. I hope you are enjoying uh, the course. Do share your feedback. Thank you.